Okay. So welcome everyone. Um, and I think I know everybody here, but just in case I'm Chris Louie and uh, I am institution free right now. I live just outside of Washington DC in Maryland. And I guess I, my role was to manage and put the, the grant proposal process that we're, we're uh, trying to go for. So um, I learned a lot while writing the grant and I'm sure there's a lot more to learn, but I figured uh, th this uh, figure kind of encapsulates the whole concept of what we're calling optics. Um, so, but don't worry, because we will actually go through this. So optics, right, the acronym stands for the Organization for Physics at Two-Year Colleges. And uh, this is probably the wordiest of our slides, but really what was envisioned was this one-stop shop for people who teach physics at two-year colleges. So a way to create a community for us and um, provide relevant um, professional development opportunities, um, also create and perpetuate benchmarks. Um, so we'll, we'll talk more about how we'll um, accomplish these in, in terms of optics, but the, this is sort of the lofty uh, vision, I guess. So we submitted the proposal about five weeks ago, and next week there's actually an off office hours with the program officers at NSF um, for this call for proposal. So I plan to join and find out what's going on and whether we will hear anything anytime soon. Uh, chances are no. It, I think uh, that they claim six to 12 months, but I heard of some grants taking longer to hear back from, right, Krista? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the program doesn't have a fancy acronym at NSF, which is uh, shocking. I think it's the only one that doesn't have it, but it targets undergraduate STEM education specifically at two-year colleges. So I think uh, that they, when, when I went to an information session last year, they talked about it being a new program and they were looking for big, bold ideas. And this is definitely a big, bold idea. Um, so our proposed budget was just under $3 million. Um, the grant duration will be about four years. And this idea has been around for a while, right? Like we, those of us who worked on this were not the first ones to um, think about it, but um, the time just seemed right to, to go for it again. Um, there have been proposals in the past that NSF hasn't funded. So this time, you know, we'll be lucky, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this summer, there was a big push of about 35 volunteers. A lot of you on this call were, um, as, were part of this. So that was pretty awesome. And in a um, spirit of transparency, I figured I'd show you kind of where the money is going. So um, the biggest component is for wages and benefits um, for all the different people who are working on creating optics and making it succeed. Um, we also have other, a big chunk going to say AIP, the American Institute of Physics for a Survey, which we'll talk more about. Um, because AAPT is acting as our fiduciary agent, I will be able to pronounce that word eventually. The, they'll handle the money <laughs> and write the checks. Um, but so the and and a lot of their support staff will be involved. So there's some going to overhead. Um, we have a large chunk going to participant travel support. So every time we run a conference or a workshop, we've put in a significant amount to help participants pay for air travel and hotel costs. Um, and then there's also 
a chunk for people who are involved in optics to be able to travel as well. All right, so our directors, co-directors, I guess Glenda's going to shoot me if I don't be clear about this. <laughs> so um, for now, I'm going to be the director for optics. And then our co-directors, we have Bob Hilborn from AAPT and Glenda, who's on the call, and Dwayne, who's also on the call. Um, and we also pulled in uh, Stephanie Chastine, who's um, a really experienced external evaluator for large um, NSF STEM education specific grants. Um, and she helped us a lot with just creating the um, proposal and fine tuning things. And she's brought on Miranda, who's um, in training, I guess, but Miranda has a lot of experience with working with TYCs, but more from the biology um, side of things. Um, and we put together a small advisory board. So if you're curious, um, we have Eric Baer. He's uh, so each of our advisory board members are bringing a specific area of expertise to um, our proposal. So he's working, he's a geoscience um, person and working on this grant to SAGE 2YC and specifically we brought him in for what we're calling the change agent model. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, Ann Cox, she's a uh, one of the PIs on the E-Alliance grant, which is a mutual mentoring program. Um, Geraldine Cochran has a sense of experience with physics education research and diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Uh, Alexis Knob um, is with AAPT. Is that right? Yes. And <laughs> also has expertise in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then Todd Leaf um, was one of the PIs on the new faculty teaching experience. Uh, we are also planning to partner with other groups that uh, you'll recognize here in terms of physics education. So the idea is that we're, we're not trying to recreate things so much as perpetuate things that have been successful in the past. So kind of, I guess this is really the lofty um, vision for optics, right? So we want to create a community of practice to advance physics education, specifically at two-year colleges, uh, provide benchmarks for faculty growth. So try to come up with some national ways of doing that. Um, increase diversity by being more supportive with our students, for instance. Um, transform the community right, through DEI efforts, um, improve student success and access to education, and also finding ways to adapt to changing trends in our community. All right, so specifically, I guess, you know, how are we going to achieve these lofty visionary statements, right? So what we want um, are faculty to not feel isolated. So they have mentors, they feel networked, there's a community. Um, we want to broaden the use of student-centered research-based pedagogies. Um, try to create more programs that are launched or championed by tier colleges. So we, we can maintain an identity. Um, if you are unfamiliar with tandem conferences, these are one day conferences for two year college faculty associate with an AAPT meeting, but they are um, sporadic. And um, another goal is to establish a culture of physics education research at uh, two year colleges. So I'll go through what um, we have written into the grant for each of these programs, um, but I thought it would be nice to just highlight them all here. 
And if you have questions while I'm babbling, just uh, feel free to interrupt me. <laughs> so the first uh, program is continuing professional development workshops, right? So these you're familiar with probably. Um, Joe Hefner and Tom Okuma are, are our program coordinators. And uh, we've attached uh, one of the project directors with each uh, leadership team as well, just because NSF likes to see what we're doing and justify our existence. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of different professional development workshops. We continue to have them um, both at AAPT national meetings and also um, off to the side or even things like what we're doing right now with our Zoom meetings. Um, so, I think what what uh, topics will be covered will depend largely on what the community is looking for. Um, we have 15, we're planning 15 different workshop um, components. <laughs> I'm losing words, it's Friday afternoon. <laughs> Um, and we also plan to have a wide variety of how things will um, be offered. So, you know, maybe some short ones, maybe some long workshop series, and also a variety of um, modalities. So hopefully, you know, some in-person things, but it, I think uh, in terms of time and travel difficulties, having some vir virtual um, possibilities would be important, um, as well as expanding to more asynchronous, more like webinars or, um, oh, there's a term that I've lost, but the idea of a self-guided kind of workshop, right? And part of what we want to do with this grant is to create some sustainability for the community. Um, so one of the ways we plan to do this is to record, you know, any sort of in person or synchronous um, workshops, and then use those as a starting point to create more asynchronous offerings. All right, so the second program is the new faculty development series. Um, some of you are familiar with the new faculty training experience. Um, and if you're not, um, this is what it's all about. So uh, Brooke Haig and Krista Wood are taking the lead on this program. So this is, I already said this. Um, so this was a, a long, immersive, very transformative training that a number of us went through. We started off with reading some PER publications and having discussions online. And then we met at a local, well, a local, we met at a two-year college somewhere and uh, had four days of intense training. And I, I remember seeing the agenda before I went the first time and they had stuff scheduled from like 7 a.m. to 10 or 11 p.m. and I thought I'm not going to survive but uh, it, it was okay <laughs> and after all of this training you know workshops and immersive experiences to improve how we reach students uh, we all went back to our home institutions implemented these changes um, and had discussion boards online and then uh, at the end of all of this we had another a commencement conference so brought everyone back discussed changes had more trainings and also presented at the apt national meeting right so this is a model that we plan to follow since it worked quite well and for the grant we plan to have two cohorts um, because they these are this is almost a two year commitment, right? So two cohorts over four years and hopefully targeting about 20 participants for each cohort. And the other thing to point out is the new faculty 
experience that has happened in the past is also supported with a lot of faculty development research that says that the, the one and done workshops um, have their place, but they're not as effective as sustained support as faculty try new pedagogies and new instructional strategies when they have that support, because it's hard, it's hard work. The first time I tried, you know, these great ideas, I bombed. And to have that support, to be able to try again and figure out how to carry on, that's, that's what we're looking for is the extended support in getting faculty to try research-based instructional strategies. And this model has worked a number of times um, by all the people that have come before. Yeah. Thanks, Krista, indeed. And I think the other thing it does is it builds community, right? So a lot of us know each other because we went through this program and- And, and on the um, um, enrollment or part of things, we, we want to perhaps have a quota for uh, adjunct faculty. And we also want to, to have a few uh, prospective uh, teachers, graduate students attending some of those too, if we can have uh, a quota for them too, that's. Thanks, Glenda. See, it's good to have you guys here because uh, I'm not remembering. So there's that. also a question in the chat. Uh, will oh. the development series be able to have any grad credits or in-service credits? We needed this for professional development for promotion at RTYC. Um, I know that my particular section um, the Southern Ohio section of the APT um, is where, where we can give out CEUs, um, but I don't know what the plans are for the grant, Chris. Um, we should, yes. We don't have plans for that, but that is something we need to have, so thanks. We can definitely um, provide CEUs, continuing education units, um, and we can look into the graduate credits. I. I know AAPT uses um, some, there's some things that have happened in the past that we can check out. Yeah, it, I think there, it's definitely been done before. So it's not, it's not an unknown thing. And thank you for bringing that up because that is an important um, Chris, feature. I, yes. AAPT does offer graduate credit to Mercyhurst uh, University that we could look into. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Hooray. Great. OK, so next up is the Leadership Institute that will be provided by Brooke and Krista again. Um, yeah, we we are leaning on them. So um, Brooke actually worked on a previous, ran a previous Leadership Institute, um, which were one day trainings to bring leadership skills and um, try to affect change at various levels. And so we're going to borrow that model, but also pair it or expand it with the cohort idea to try to help um, again with that support in the community as people are trying to make changes. So, you know, that before Meeting up, there'll be some literature review and some virtual discussions. Um, there'll be an intensive workshop day that's associated with a national meeting. Um, and uh, some sort of project that I think that the participants can work on developing as part of their one day thing, but they may continue to refine that um, and try to make some change at their own institution. Um, and during the, the year where you know, this plan is being implemented, um, a lot of mentorship, I think, and check-ins, perhaps virtual workshops to help support the participants. And again, we plan to have two cohorts, about 10 participants each over the grant period. Brooke, Kirk, and likewise, you that, yeah, yeah, apparently I just have to keep talking. Um, the Leadership Institute is based off of two previous leadership institutes. And there was a project that 
I, I know the one that I went to as a participant in 2013, I had a little project and it did come to fruition. So we're looking to um, support that a little bit beyond the, the one day, but, but we are building on successful programs that have happened in the past. Yeah, and I think that that is an important message that none of these things um, are really new. They've just all been brought together. So these have all been successful programs from the past that have been funded um, by various institutions, but mostly NSF. And we're trying to come up with a way to make sure that things continue indefinitely as opposed to the grant ends and everything stops. And the most important part of this is that by all of these activities that we're doing, we're building the community that will support all of us through our careers. And I think that's that's like the biggest mess overall message for me. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> so um, we have a program in this, you know, the, there's overlap, right, with the new faculty stuff and continuing professional workshops, leadership, new, um, I already said new faculty. So there, there is definitely overlap and we acknowledge that in our proposal, but we're thinking of these as separate things that may, you know, we may have some overlap in the cohorts. We'll see how things play out. So this is a, a change agent model that we're going to use to try to increase or improve diversity, equity, and inclusion. So the idea here is that um, in a change agent model, you come together from various places, learn a bunch of things, and then take it out, right? So you disperse and disseminate to others. And so the way we envision this, that again, will be a long-term training program. So there would be some initial in-person workshop intensive training kind of thing to look at ways to um, improve diversity, equity, and inclusion in STEM education. Uh, and then the participants will go back to their home institutions and implement some of these ideas, right? So the idea is practice and become a local expert and then they'll spend the second year running workshops at their home institutions to expand on this idea. So hopefully we can help improve overall the uh, diversity in STEM fields. And we don't like to just leave people hanging, right? So we'll have a, a reunion and, you know, I'm thinking this would be pretty cool to match up with some of the leadership institution too, but I'm babbling, so I'll stop. So well, I think you, you make a good point that DEI really goes through all of these areas and it's not just its own thing that, that we need, you know, the, the leadership team of optics is working together to incorporate DEI in all areas because it's so important. Thanks, indeed. So again, we plant two cohorts and that hopefully pull in about 20 participants over um, for each cohort. All right, so the tandem conferences. So this is kind of like a, a day of continuing professional development workshops. So that's why Joe and Tom are uh, on point for this. <laughs> So these tandem conferences, as I was saying before, um, are associated with an APT national meeting, and they're often hosted um, in the same geographic location as the national meeting. Um, and the idea is just to have kind of like a, a, well, really a conference, right? So workshops, presentations, time for discussion, time for networking, but it's all uh, specific to two-year colleges. So the only people who are participating are two-year college faculty or those who want to be, I guess. Um, and in the past, we've had about 50 participants or we've capped things at 50 participants, I believe. Um, 
But as part of the grant initiative, uh, I think it would be useful to, for us to create guidelines on how to run or host um, and organize one of these. So this is me speaking from experience since I hosted one in 2015 and I'd never been to one and I had no idea how to organize a conference. And um, it was a learning experience. And so if we can institutionalize that in some way so that people um, who might be asked to possibly host or organize one in the future could had something to start with. Um, and we also would like to come up with a plan to offer these conferences regularly, right? So we've put in two to four years, depending on, you know, location and time and demand. Um, but we have asked for funding for hosting two of the tandem conferences over the course of our grant. All right, so um, one of the big things with two-year college faculty and especially physics is how often you're the only one um, or you're in a really small group. And so having some sort of mentorship or networking opportunity is really important. So um, we are going to, or we've written into the proposal, this uh, model of following e-alliances. Um, and this is a model of peer mentoring where people are matched based on certain criteria and then um, meet up. So the e-alliance currently um, is to support women in physics. Um, and so we were matched up based off of our institution for the most part, our type of institution. Um, and what optics would like to do is to borrow that model, but expand it so that we have both peer mentoring where everybody helps to support each other, but also more traditional mentoring where, you know, let's say you are going up for tenure and you'd like to talk to one or two other people who have been through the process recently and can share some tips or guidance, support, you know, that, that kind of thing, advice. Um, so right now, the E-Alliance grant is funding a pilot project um, that I've been working on and very soon, I'll be looking for people to beta test that. So uh, keep a lookout on your email, I guess. So you may or may not know that APT has a pamphlet called the Guidelines for Two-Year College Physics Programs. And this was created 20-ish years ago to establish national standards for having physics programs at two-year colleges. And obviously things have changed in the last 20 years. And so another thing our grant would like to do is to update those guidelines. Um, and Dwayne and Sherry Severda, oh, thanks Krista, <laughs> um, are tasked with this. And, and so the idea is to create these guidelines that are based off of data, right? And, and so we'll need to collect some data, but also um, discuss things about offering physics program or physics courses at a two-year college that may be quite different from, say, a four-year school, right? Are we doing okay so far? My internet connection is unstable. Thanks computer for telling me. So I'm going to um, stop my video. That should help. <laughs> All right. So one of the big thrusts um, recently is to try to expand physics education research to tier colleges. And part of this goes back to the equity, diversity, and inclusion um, initiatives. So Right now, most of physics education research is conducted on, you know, intro physics students, 
at an R1 type of institution, which is not representative of the demographics of students who take introductory college level physics, I would say, right? And I think if we can expand a lot of these um, educational research studies to include to your college students, we could definitely broaden the impact of physics education research, right? To validate these findings. Um, so the idea here is that optics isn't going to run a research program, but will help facilitate people who are interested in running some sort of research program. So Kareem Diff and Sherry Zaverda will be working on this. Um, we've already talked with Fizport, which has a mechanism to help pull in data. Let's say if you run the force concept inventory in your classes, um, one of the issues with doing education research at a two-year college or any small institution is that the numbers are small. And so if we can aggregate data from, say, multiple two-year college institutions, then we can start getting statistically significant results. That, does that make sense? I don't think I'm using the words right, but hopefully you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and the idea is to also partner with the mentorship program so that we can create sort of these research groups, right, to help with um, providing support and um, guidance, advice, problem solving together so that you're not off in your own institution by yourself trying to do research without anybody to talk to. And what I found is that um, research, when you have people to bounce ideas back and forth, um, you can actually get things done. Whereas if you're doing it on yourself by yourself, I'm really good at getting things rejected on my own. But when I <laughs> joined the team, um, I, I was able to actually move forward with things and now yeah, before COVID, but, <laughs> but a, a team helps. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so um, the American Institute of Physics does these surveys of uh, physics education, but, in, and if they do this every year, but the problem is that to your college physics information data get lumped in with un, under the umbrella of undergraduate um, physics. And so, finding ways to disaggregate that data so that we can separate out to your college students and faculty, I think is important since the demographics are very different and the needs um, and concerns can also be very different. So AIP has done um, to your college specific data collection and analysis, but they've all been funded by specific grants. We're going to fund one more since it's been a decade since the last one was taken. Um, and as part of the grant proposal, what, what we'd really like to do is to see if we can discuss with AIP and come up with a way to make this more regular an occurrence um, where they disaggregate to your college data. Um, and you know, we, the idea is to use this data to inform things like updates to the guidelines to physics programs. All right, so we will also create some sort of digital library, right? So a library an archive of all sorts of things related to to your college physics. So. Um, one of the issues that that exists in our community is you know the people run successful programs in the past and then they leave the community right or something happens and that that knowledge is gone so trying to come up with a way to institutionalize our community's knowledge is important 
Um, so we would like to develop that um, as part of our grant. By the way, if things are going on in the chat, I can't actually see chat right now. So um, hopefully others are chiming in when they can. <laughs> well, Glenda pointed out that before the, the AIP survey, which is expensive, we're actually going to be carrying out informal surveys ourselves. Ah, yes, thank you. Right, more on that in like two minutes. <laughs> All right, so um, we'd like to remind you that we are all part of Optics. It's a community effort. Um, and so, you know, you can help by letting people know that this is going to happen. I'm totally confident that we'll get funded, if not this time around, then next time for sure. But uh, I, I think we'll, we'll be funded. Um, so you can also participate, right? Do things, go to workshops um run a workshop or give a talk or you know join a mentoring group that kind of thing right help others uh, who are not as far along in their educational journey as you are or who may have had different experiences right we can all learn from each other and be brave and take some initiative if there's something you see that you'd like to do or change or i don't know Joe has a comment in the chat, uh, Joe Hefner. Um, I haven't been clear on the extent to which we can talk about this with others. Um, do you want to address that, Chris? Uh, I think it's mostly just that it's in the proposal stage and NSF has to you know, get to the, the review stage. And so we don't have funding yet, but we do have a, a very strong community and so I think it's fine to talk about what our plans are. Um, and, you know, we don't have the funding yet. Um, but the other thing that um, this, this community created was input into a white paper on NSF funding priorities. And so we're hoping that NSF actually listens to that white paper, which prioritized this type of project. Uh, and I, I will say that everybody we met as we were writing the grant proposal said this was one incredibly important and necessary for physics education and two we were very well organized in all of our activities. Um, so you know when when uh, someone very experienced like our external evaluator Stephanie says. Oh yeah, this this should totally get funded. I mean, the, this is this reads way better than anything I've seen in a while. I don't know if she actually said it in those words, but that that's what I took her comments to mean. <laughs> I I feel fairly confident that you know we'll be successful. But yeah, so to get back to your question, Joe, I would say let people know that we're planning this. It we're waiting on funding. Right. So a lot of people don't share the entire proposals at this stage, and there is no problem in sharing. And eventually, the abstract is public and needs to be shared. And and there's some people would never share with I'm afraid. I don't know the people who steal the idea and all. And boy, if someone wants to steal idea, yeah, go ahead. Let's do more. <laughs> no. <laughs> so so I I some people research. Um, um, in other fields of research, they they um, they behave uh, adopt the the trend line that you should just open up what you. This is public material, uh, even before it is funded. It's it, the idea is out there, so there is no problem. It's some people will never show everything, but it's fine. It, it's like sharing your codes or sharing the information you have. I'm I'm pro sharing it and, and being transparent. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Awesome. All right. So, okay. So, um, while we wait to hear from NSF, right, there are a couple of things going on. Um, 
so in two weeks there will be another tyc zoom meeting um that uh, i've organized i don't think i've sent a link out yet i might have if not i will do so after today's meeting um so get the facts out it is a an sf grant funded project in association with apt and the colorado school of mines the idea is to encourage uh, people to consider teaching um, high school STEM type of programs, right? Um, and one of the big things is that there are a lot of misconceptions about teaching as a profession. And so their goal is to make sure people have actual facts. Um, the, that grant is wrapping up and what they want to do is to submit a new grant that expands these ideas to two-year colleges. And so the purpose of this next meeting is to have one a mini workshop with the get the facts out people. And then two, to have a discussion amongst, like within our community of what we could do if we had money, right? So how could we help to get the facts out and encourage people to consider teaching as a career? Um, so that's next. Um, the mentorship program, as I was saying, there's a pilot project in the works, and we will need beta testers soon. Um, the guy who's doing the programming indicated earlier this week that it may be as early as the end of this month where we can have people test it out. Um, also, in there's a short informal survey. Glenda, do you want to talk more about that? Yes. Um, <laughs> these, the, we'll be advertising it more aggressively um, by, at the end of February, beginning of March, through APT, media resources, and uh, the whole, um, we'll ask APT to uh, fire away an email to everyone, even though this is meant only for two-year college faculty. But if we cast a bigger net, perhaps people can spread out uh, more. Uh, it, we need to advertise it. This will happen very soon through our TYC Google Groups in Slack. Um, we do have a Facebook page, it will be there. I plan to soon be creating an Instagram account for us, a Twitter account for us, <laughs> all these things, at least temporarily. Uh, once the grant is, is on, we will have a media officer. We, it's, it's part of the budget of the grant. We'll pay someone to, to do a lot of these things too, because it's, it's a full-time job to, to, to do all the media too. But, um, um, full-time job. Well, we'll pay part-time for someone to take care of these things, but yeah, not full-time. But um, uh, meanwhile, the, the, um, the link is available. I sent out the link. And if uh, you remember the website of the um, two-year college committee uh, of the APT, everything is on that website of the two-year college committee. So here's the website of the two-year college committee of the APT, where we posted in the past resources from our Zoom meetings, remember at the start of COVID and all? Well, you find there a link for optics, and we posted a link to the survey right on the home front page of that website. We'll, we've also, there's another link hidden inside the, the optics header menu. Um, and eventually, we soon yeah, we, we, uh, we'll be then more aggressively posting this to everyone. It's a short survey, about 10 minutes, and this will inform us of um, a lot of workshops and a lot of the needs and um, preferences of our uh, two-year college faculty. And this will inform a lot of the programs that we'll be doing in the future. And um, yeah. So if you can take a look at it, uh, there are 17 or 16 questions. And um, again, it's less than 10 minutes and it is informal and it is anonymous. All right. Thank you, Glenda. Is it, mm -hmm. is it live? Like basically get people it's to live. start? It's okay. live and active. I also have live and active, the start of the contest. Oh, yes. 
if you want to share the fun. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a logo that uh, one of us mm. on this Zoom call came out with, and it's not me. Um, I particularly like it, but uh, we want to have a contest in case uh, somebody else can come up with something even more awesome. I think if you could get the gummy bears in that, that would just like be perfect. <laughs> that rainbow gummy bears on the side, if you could get that somewhere, you know, shooting <laughs> you, out of the O or something, that would be great. Gummy bears just like shooting out from an O. Hey, that I love awesome. rainbow gummy bears. I love the idea. <laughs> Tasty. Uh, so this is actually came from a photo I took because I was eating gummy bears and I dumped out a rainbow and I was like, oh, I have to line them up and take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so hopefully we will again also strategically try not to, to send too much information, but you know, end of March, maybe April, um, more aggressively advertise this logo contest that would be open until, uh, until September. And the survey is a 2022 survey that will leave it open in principle during the entire year. But we hope to have preliminary results to show before the summer APT meeting. And uh, we hope to have a lot more participation also right after the summer APT meeting. So we'll leave it open, but collect preliminary results as we go. Awesome. So I'm sorry I talked at you guys so much. Hope uh, it wasn't too um, scattered. <laughs> Excellent presentation. Uh, thanks, Theo. You're always good for support. Yay. <laughs> Chris, this was so important and so needed. This will be this was recorded. This will be posted on the YouTube site of the Committee on Physics at Trier Colleges. And we are collecting all this, you know, media material, and eventually this will go somewhere else. But this is part of the history of right of our um endeavor here yeah so is there anything else anyone wants to share or ask or say um before i start recording i hope it gets funded i think it's a wonderful project i'm all excited to see what happens me too great job everyone great job looks great this really is a grassroots effort and so many people worked on this. Um, we have an incredible leadership team. The, the co-directors are phenomenal, um, but so many people, many people on this call um, contributed and that's what makes this such a strong project is that the, the entire community is behind it. Indeed. All right. I'm going to stop recording then. Thank you.